Well, we welcome you back. Uh, I just want to quickly make a comment to the audience who may be listening and watching this that we, we do have a bit of an audio issue um, and that we apologize for that, uh, but there's really nothing we can do about it. So we will continue. Um, uh, Mr. Rudling, I'd like to actually go through the case uh, more specifically. Uh, talk to me about Anna Arden and the suspicion against Mr. Assange with regards to her first. Okay. <clears throat> what Anna claims is that on the, ninth, on the night of the 13th of August, when they first met and had sex, Anna says, Anna says that the sex was okay, but prior to the sex, there was some violence when they were fighting about the condom. That's basically what she says. And then she also, there is an allegation that on the evening on Wednesday, the 18th, that he undressed, his, he took his clothes off his lower body and then rubbed uh, himself against Anna's back. That's, those are the, uh, the facts of the case. And when you say that there was a, a violence, that she claims that there was violence, or actually in your article you really say that she Im implies that there was a type of violence that occurred uh, prior to them laying down on the bed. Um, yeah. What exactly is it that she says happens, specifically? Uh, she says that when they started out, Julian was rough and impatient. He very quickly tore his clo her clothes off. And then, uh, that's the first part. The second part, after, the, after she's completely naked, then they lie down in bed. And in bed, he's pinning her hands down, so she's unable to reach for a condom. And it's this part which is described as being violent. He's holding her hands so she cannot reach a condom. Uh, after a while, he doesn't understand why this fighting is going on, so he asks her a question, what's up? And she says, I want you to use a condom. After she said that, he releases her hands, puts on a condom, and then they have sex, which is obviously consensual. When they have sex, there is no mentioning of any violence or any pinning or any or anything. So it's it's if we can see it as three separate acts. First the undressing, then they end up in bed fighting about the condom, and then the third time then they then they have sex. So that's did, did they end up fighting about the condom or you're you're trying to say just I want to be very clear here. You're trying to communicate that she implies that there was a fight over the condom, but when, uh, and you make this point in your essay that one can't read another person's mind. And so when he asks what is going on, and she expresses the fact that she would like uh, for there to be a condom uh, it used, that he releases her arms. And therefore, yeah. in your analysis uh, from your essay, you say the implication there's an insinuation of violence, but if you actually look at the uh, specific acts very clearly, uh, there is no violence actually occurring. There is no crime occurring because the yes. act of sex was actually consensual based on her witness statement. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. If we look on the, at the last part of, of, the, of the event, the sex is, is, is consensual and there is no violence. There's nothing going on with the sex part. It's just this wrestling part. In order, in order for it to be a crime, you have, you, have, you have to use violence and then you have to have some type of sexual act connected to it. In this case, there isn't. If I would, if I would hold your hands to prevent you from, reach, from reaching uh, a pizza, is that a crime? Right, right. And then you can say, well, if I, if, I, if I hold your hands to prevent you from re reaching the pizza, and then I have sex with you, then it is great. Probably you wouldn't talk about the pizza. Right. You know, it, it's funny. I, I think one of the uh, 
ideas that came to mind with regards to the condom issue uh, and Swedish uh, feminist law, if you want to call it that, um, is, I mean, nowadays, uh, a, a woman who contracts, like for HPV, for example, human papillomavirus, I mean, most cervical cancer cases are uh, sourced to the human papillomavirus, which is uh, trans transferred to women through unprotected sex with a male who carries this. And it's a very, uh, it's one of the most common sexually transmitted diseases. I think, I don't know the exact statistic, but a, a large percentage of women have HPV. Uh, nowadays, they have a vaccine for young girls uh, yeah. to prevent them from having HPV. Um, it seems to me that uh, I could see uh, the issue of uh, a condom being a very important one to a woman um, with regards to wanting to prevent something like that from happening to her. Um, as you see it, is your understanding that because Anna did not protest the uh, condom issue, meaning like she, that there was no, uh, I'm sorry, let me rephrase that. In, in your mind, is there a crime that occurred in the sexual act related to the condom between Anna Arden and Julian Assange? Sorry, I didn't, I didn't I'm sorry, I'm not being clear. Um, as you see it, is there a crime that was committed with regards to the use of condom? Uh, no. There is a... The condom, the condom issue comes from the fact that Sophia had unprotected sex. That's why Anna makes up this story about the condom. The, I mean, the condom, when Julian and Anna had sex, they used the condom. Uh, and that was, she checked twice that the condom was on. She's claiming something which I never heard anybody claim before, that during sex, he broke the condom on purpose and then continued. And she wasn't aware of it. And it's not until after the sex, when he withdraws, that she says she saw that when he took the condom off, she saw that the condom contained no semen. Which is also another strange statement, because when a condom breaks, it rolls up, rolls up and forms a ring around the penis. So normally you see, you see a broken condom as being no condom. You don't see it as a condom without semen. And, and uh, there are so many ways she describes this event that has no resemblance to what it looks like in real life. And what's even more important in, to me is that when, when she says the condom, is, the issue of the condom is so very important, she doesn't check the condom. For, for seven days, she does nothing to check the condom. It's all of a sudden in her discussion with the police, so eight days after the event, that she says, oh, I think I have the condom and I can check it now. I mean, so it's, there's something that's, there is nothing in the story about the condom that makes sense to me. It's, it, and that's why I'm saying the whole thing with the condom is just made up. Okay. Tell me, um, tell me why you chose to use the names of the witnesses, including the two plaintiffs, in your essay. Uh, the main reason is that the detention memorandum has been published on the internet since late January, and very many people have read it. There are nine witnesses. Just pause for a second, because the sound is really bad. Okay, start again, please. From the beginning? Uh, no, just just uh, from the I'm point where you talk about um, how long the uh, how long the names have been on the internet. Oh, since late January, the detention memorandum has been published on the internet, so lots of people have read it and they have seen the names in in the detention memorandum. And when I write about it. If I would have called it witness one, witness two, witness three, it would have become very confusing. So I used their real names. 
it just it's just for an issue to make it clear. And I think the only person that actually suffers from all this is Sophia. Because I can't see that she's she's not making she's not coming up with false allegations. She's been involved in this, she was very worried, and she ends up in this mess without her really wanting it. And, so and, and how do you get that sense? Where do you get that from? Uh, because when I when I read what actually has happened, she has sex with Julian, and then when they depart, they, she says, "Please call me," and he says, "I will call you." And they and he won't. She tries to call him, and he never returns calls. She, because of it's the first time in her life that she has had unprotected sex. And she's very, very worried about disease, and particularly HIV. So after this event, she's extremely worried and would like to talk to him, and he doesn't return calls. That's why she calls Anna, in order to get hold of Julian. It is not to report that she's been raped. It's not, it's, she would like to talk to Julian, and she can't. And when Anna hears about this story, then she sees an opportunity to use Sophia as some kind of tool to get to Julian. She's, Anna uses Sophia in order to have Sophia to report Julian. And that's why I call it revenge by proxy. I, I would like to, to um, actually uh, look at that more closely, but let's let's talk about Sophia again.